And we're back with one family's search for answers after the sudden death of their son. Tyler Holinsky, a beloved young man, was a promising quarterback at Washington State University. He took his own life earlier this year, and what his parents have learned since could help other young athletes and their families. We're going to talk to them exclusively, but first, what they shared with Sports Illustrated for a documentary about Tyler's life and legacy. It is a moment Tyler Holinsky's family and friends will never forget. The sophomore quarterback leading Washington State to a dramatic comeback win last season over Boise State. Washington State has a comeback for the ages. But much more than his athletic accomplishments, they remember a positive, kind young man who always looked out for others until one afternoon in January when he didn't show up for practice. Two of his teammates went looking for him, but it was too late. At the age of 21, Tyler Holinsky had taken his own life. I remember my phone ringing, and it was Coach Huff, and he said, I'm sorry, Ms. Holinsky, but Tyler's dead. While still reeling from shock and grief, the Holinskys got an unusual request from the Mayo Clinic. You certainly don't think that you have to give his brain to the Mayo Clinic for an autopsy. The results, according to the family, showed evidence of CTE, the brain disease multiple studies have linked to playing football. Did football cure Tyler? I don't think so. Did he get CTE from football? Probably. In a statement to NBC News, Washington State University says it had many safeguards in place to protect students before the tragedy and is adding even more, including a second formal mental health screening for all members of the football team after we lost Tyler, along with meetings with all varsity athletes to help identify individuals who might be at risk for mental health issues. Tyler's family has started a nonprofit called the Holinsky Hope Foundation in his honor, dedicated to supporting mental health programs for young people. He was he was goofy and funny. And yeah, not to hilarious half uh -huh. the time. Where's my breakfast in bed? But we didn't see it. His brothers didn't we see didn't it. We didn't see it at all. Mark and Kim Holinsky are with us now. Good morning to both of you, and Good thank morning. you for coming. I mean. From that incredible documentary, I can see you raised a beautiful, incredible kid, and that you guys are pretty incredible parents. Um, what was it, what was he like as a young boy? Well, perfect, <laughs> right? Sweet and fun and, and good and kind, and that, and that's how he continued his life. Seems like everybody who was talked to in the documentary, everyone we've, we've talked to, um, said he was like a bright, happy, outgoing. They described him as goofy and optimistic. And then he goes to college and becomes that football player. And when you see that image, what do you think? Oh, that was an exciting time. I mean, we were very, very excited for him. Um, Kim was at the game. Mm -hmm. Ryan and I were watching uh, from home, but that was... Uh, that was the pinnacle sort of of his football career and we we're excited to talk to him afterwards and his brother from the hospital ryan and i at home right so you have this child who is uh, who seems presumably on top of the world like has yeah. everything going for him i'm sure a million times in your head you thought was there something he said was there something that happened when he was at college Kim, when you, when you look back, were there things he said? Was there anything that you, you thought of? We do, of course you yeah. do. You go and you, you, you look at every piece and there's nothing really there. Maybe there is a comment made here or there. There's um, certain plays that we looked at, like the Arizona game, which, which is mm. in the Sports Illustrated piece, um, certain hits that he took. That, but there weren't really any verbal signs from Tyler to us or to anybody at Washington State that, that he was suffering. When you got the phone call and I watched you watching the piece, how many times in your head do you hear that voice of Coach Huff telling you what happened to your son? Well, Coach Huff, actually, he called yeah. and, and said that uh, Tyler missed practice. That was the first call uh, I got, which was so that he hasn't missed practice in 21 years. Right. Um, and then immediately they said they were filing a missing persons report and the team couldn't find his car, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we went from thinking he was a terrible driver, yeah. you know, that he was, you know, sort of out of gas or made a little hit and run or something and, um, to complete, you know, terror. And, and it, it happened in the blink of an eye and we were obviously devastated. 
or when you heard about how your son passed away, was there disbelief? Like, how is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. I think mostly because he doesn't know how to shoot a gun. He's never shot a gun except the day before he passed. He didn't know what he was doing when he had that AR-15. It right. belonged to another athlete. And I, I think the fact that how we did it um, is, was a shock in, of itself. Too. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned in that documentary, too, that the Mayo Clinic asked to do an autopsy. Did you think it was unusual that the Mayo Clinic was, you know, wanted to do an autopsy on a teenage boy, a football player? It wasn't surprising yeah. uh, to us at the time. I mean, we were in complete shock. Um, we wanted to know everything we could and find out anything we could, of course. So we immediately said, sure, you know, we'd, we'd like to know what we can find out. And the findings that a young boy your son's age had CTE, was that, I didn't, I mean, personally, I didn't know kids that young could even have that. Well, we didn't either. Uh, and we, I think, like Mark said, it was a shock. To, to get those results and, and to find out that he had it and to realize that the sport that he loved may have contributed to, to that diagnosis. Medical examiner said he had the brain of a 65 year old, which is, which is really hard to take. You know, it's really hard. But you mentioned earlier he was the sweetest, most yeah. outgoing, giving kid. That, that, was, uh, that was difficult to hear. Another thing that I found that must have been wrenching for you as parents is your, your other son, Brian, who wants to was playing college football. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to say to him, honey, no, I'm sorry. We We're did not say sure. to him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we got the results. And, and we didn't just get the results and hand him the results and say, read this. We did a lot of research. You know, can CTE be tested in the living? It, yeah. it can't. Um, is there a genetic or hereditary link? They're not sure. So we had to find out as much information as we can, talk to experts, and let Ryan know. So what do you want? You came here, obviously, because you, had, you have a message. You want people to know something. What is it that you want people to know? Well, with Holinsky's Hope, we're, we realize, especially what's hitting the country right now with recent deaths by suicide, that people need to keep talking about suicide and, and mental illness and, and mental health. And we need to erase the stigma. Um, and what we're trying to do for student athletes is we're trying to fund programs that support them and their mental health. They need it. There's not enough out mm -hmm. there for these, for these beautiful athletes that give of themselves to their colleges, but it's, their minds aren't taken care of. And what do you, what do you miss the most about your son, so we can uh, know him a little more? Yeah, no, he, the the part that's hardest is the little things, you know, the, um, hey, big, how you doing, you know, mm -hmm. just FaceTime and, and text and um, certainly playing. You know, we have three wonderful kids and an mm -hmm. older one who's done playing now, the younger one that you mentioned, Ryan, um, and Tyler was just as special, and it was so much fun to see him you know, on the weekends or when he would mm -hmm. come home. That's what we miss. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming. I know it was hard and it is important. So thank you for coming. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Come here to me. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks you again. Yoda. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.